Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So you probably weren't thinking you would see this thing again, and neither was I, but as it turns out, there's something about a 1987 Les Paul that people don't want to see modern electronics in it. If you didn't follow this build, I ended up trying to retrofit a PCB style connection into this guitar because it was a husk. I think that was a bad decision just based on the market right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewire this with vintage style wiring and a pair of burst buckers instead of these. The 490R and the 490T are just not that great of pickups to begin with. The 490T in particular is not a great pickup. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with the way this build turned out, but you know, we'll see where this thing goes. The first thing I got to do is take these electronics out. All right, and the last thing is going to be the pickups, so I've got to take the bridge off and the tailpiece. Now there's only one way Les Paul pickups come out, and that's through the top. So I've got to take off the rings next. And then these babies should just slide right out. All right, now that I'm back to a husk, I thought I'd show you some of the parts that are going in the guitar. So I've got a set of long shaft CTS pots, and these are 525K pots from the Art of Tone. They're supposed to approximate what a 500K pot really should be if it was within a certain tolerance. At least that's their marketing pitch. A Switchcraft switch, and I've got a set of burst buckers, uh, one and two. That's uh, neck and bridge, and those things sound really awesome. I've had those in a mid-2000s Les Paul before, and I can't say enough about them. So I'm excited to change everything over. I wanna make sure to try to wire this in really nicely. Oh, uh, let me show you the capacitors I'm gonna use really quickly. So the capacitors I'm using are Sprague Black Beauties. Now these are 60s capacitors. One of them is a 0 0.01 microfarad and the other one is a 0 0.022 microfarad. Those are basically neck and bridge. There is some drift in these. They're not quite the values stated. They're a little bit higher and that's just because of their age and the tolerance. But rather than do what I did on the white Les Paul in the past, if you saw that video, on that video, I put the pots in the guitar and started wiring everything in there. I went ahead and made a cardboard template, and I basically did that by taking the old pots, laying them down, tracing around the ends, making some holes on the cardboard, and then laying out my pots on here so it's way easier to start soldering here. And all I've done so far is wire in the two caps and a ground wire to all four pots. The most important thing about the ground wire situation is that you don't create a loop that goes all the way around because ground loops can cause unwanted noise. This is about as far as I can go with the soldering and now I probably need to install these into the body. All right, well I got the pots in there. It was a little bit of a struggle. I had to set the heights and that was really the hard part. So you kind of have to fine tune that nut adjustment on both sides of the body. You set the bottom one so that there's enough threads sticking through the top to get the nut on, but not very many more than that. Let's go ahead and wire up this bridge ground. Next step is probably gonna be to wire in the switch and the jack and then I can work on the pickups. So I'm trying to use as much vintage style stuff as possible. So I got myself a spool of this Stumac braided shielded wire and it's braided steel on the outside, cloth in the middle, and then the very core of it is uh, obviously another piece of wire. That stuff I got on Amazon and I'll post a link to that. I've been working with it to wire this switch and the main thing was just to make sure that I left myself enough slack to get to the jack and to the two positions on the volume pots where this needs to get wired. This stuff is interesting because you can push back the braid just enough to expose the amount of cloth wire you need. Then you push back the cloth to expose the end of the wire. With this stuff, it's shielded all the way down. I just had to tie the shields together and get them to ground with another small piece of wire. It might be easiest to tape these up before I run them through. A 
it's not easy to work with this braided shielded stuff. And the reason is because it's very difficult to push the braided part back without fraying the end of it first. So you fray the end of that, then you'll get some black cloth wire exposed. And again, it's difficult to push that back. It's a little bit of a struggle, but I got them in. I've got the uh, switch wired up down to the volume pot center lug and then gets soldered to the back of the volume pot. Same thing on the other volume pot. And then I've got a jack wire that runs all the way through. I'm going to go ahead and run the pickups because that way I'll have everything in the cavity. So that's just a matter of feeding these through. So with the pickups wired in and the jack in place, this is the final wiring. I think this is something that the vintage buyers would like a lot more than that PCB style wiring. Although that was kind of a fun project. Well, here's the final assembly. I've got the knobs on, I've got the pick guard on, I've got the strings in place, set the action. Everything's pretty much ready to rock here. I even changed out the strap locks for some more traditional strap buttons. And I've got the cover plates on, and it's really been a fun project. If you want to see the full build of this guitar, there is another series that was on this one from where I built it from a husk. I actually built it along with the white one, a Bigsby version, if that helps you find it. Well, friends, if you thought that was the end of the story here, so did I, but it's not quite. I really started to doubt the authenticity of these pickups, and I actually ended up removing them. When I was installing these things, I noted that they had never been installed before. They had very long leads, they had no solder marks at the end of the leads, and they had not been cut. Also, they had wax potting in the holes. So I thought, okay, well, you know, it's possible I got an unused set. Then the screws that came with them were also different than any Gibson screws I had ever seen before because they have a spot at the very top that does not threaded. I don't know, I kind of wrote that one off as, you know, maybe they're not the original screws or maybe Gibson has changed their screws and I just haven't seen these. Kind of the last straw when I was doing the installation, whenever I finally got these into the cavity of the guitar, these have a slight lip on the end of the humbucker cover. The cover is not really that uniform on the side. That actually caused fitment issues when I was putting them into the Les Paul and I actually ended up having to clearance the humbucker cavity just a bit to get these things to fit right which kind of didn't sit well with me but I wrote that off too and then I was installing them got it all done started playing it and it just sounded a little hotter than it should so I did some checking on a resistance meter and I've got a burst bucker one here with a resistance reading of 8.1 if you know anything about burst bucker ones Gibson's spec on these on their website is 7.8 that's a modern one I think back in 2014 when I was reading posts about these things and I've gone back and found some since most people were saying these were about 7.5. I've got a burst bucker two here with a resistance reading of 8.6. That's also quite high. The Gibson spec on those is uh, 8.4 for a modern one. But again, 2014, most of the time these things I've seen on forums are coming in around the 8 range. A lot of them are in the sevens. So then I started doing some research on the date codes that are on the back of these. And I found multiple instances of the same date codes on currently for sale burst buckers on eBay. So all of that added up to me being very suspicious about the authenticity of these pickups. You know, for there to be three different pickups with the exact same nine-year-old date code on eBay right now or, or sold within the last two weeks seems just really odd to me. I'm not saying these are fakes, counterfeits, copies, whatever you want to call them, but I don't have confidence in them at this point. And I asked the seller where he got them and he also got them from eBay. So absent a verified chain of custody of these from Gibson to me, I, I don't know what to make of them. So anyway, the seller has been gracious enough to agree to a refund and I'm very happy about that. I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus here. I just want to point out that when you're buying these things or Seymour Duncan's for that matter, because those things get faked a lot too, but when you're buying any pickups off of eBay, you got to be really careful. And I, 
I kind of was. When I first got these, I was buying them only from an American source and thought I was going to be doing okay, but as it turns out, you know, you never know. So anyway, these are coming out, going back to the seller, and I'll have to make a backup plan. Maybe I'll do a video on that one soon. I'm probably going to redo the pickup leads in the white guitar too, so this saga is not over. I appreciate you guys hanging with me through these builds. I love the likes and the comments you give me, and I appreciate the subscriptions, and I'll see you next time.